Less than a week ago, my dad unfortunately had his second stroke. And as with the first stroke, this one has left him with what's called aphasia, which is basically the inability to speak. So this makes, obviously, communication really frustrating and really difficult. He understands what we're saying, but he can't get the words out to communicate back. Usually, um, So I thought it would be cool to create an app from scratch to be used on a tablet that would allow him to effectively communicate. And here he is actually using the app briefly. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this app and there's actually no code involved. It is purely a Figma prototype. So if you're interested in seeing how I built this and also my thoughts as a UI UX designer in creating such a unique app, Keep on watching. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so I'm here in Figma. I'm gonna create a new frame. Um, iPad Pro 12.9 would be a good uh, frame to start with. That's, uh, I think that's the version we have actually. Um, and so, yeah, the very first screen I'm going to do, uh, I'm gonna start with the yes, no screen. So when, um, it's really important like uh, when somebody who's just had a stroke and is suffering from aphasia. Now, of course, aphasia can be uh, induced by non-stroke, like it could be a brain injury that can create aphasia and um, I think possibly diseases or whatever. But anyhow, somebody who has that, you know, pretty severely, who can't even just get out sentences, um, yes or no questions are a big factor. So um, with that said, we're gonna have a screen dedicated to just them being able to take their finger and hit yes or hit no. Now, obviously this could work on the context of a phone as well, but it's even better uh, when you have the, have a big, you know, kind of like a tablet, um, just because they could also be uh, shaky in terms of mobility. So the larger the area, the better. That's the that's the, one of the biggest things here. Um, and it's one of the things I saw like these other apps that do, like they'll pack like, 50 options on a screen. It's like so tiny. It's like they're gonna hit the wrong one possibly. Anyhow, um, so we're gonna have just uh, um, kind of like two two rows, yes at the top, no at the bottom. Very simple. And then we'll create like an interaction um, where it'll create, uh, it'll, it'll take the background and just kind of invert the colors from white to black. So to, for colors, we want maximum contrast because I, it could be a potential that a person has vision impairment as well. Strokes can impact in, uh, vision, or you could just have bad vision. So we want to maximize contrast. So I'm going to have a white back, white background with black text. The text, simple font, very easy. We want to stick with sans serif, not serif fonts. Serif fonts are just a little bit more complex with the things hanging off the end of the, the letters. So we're going to use uh, something very large uh, and quite bold. So. Um, Let's, let's go like, yeah, larger than that. So let's try like 180. All right, that looks good to me. Bold, and we're gonna use, that's that font right here is fine. Um, you know me though, I love Poppins. So we're gonna stick with Poppins. Yeah, just slightly better, I like it. All right, so um, what we'll do is, I'm gonna hit R for the rectangle tool. We're gonna drag this out. And it does give me a little indicator here in the middle that I'm in the center. So if I were to duplicate this, it'll be right there. There we go, perfect. Now we're gonna put this to the back with our left bracket key to the very bottom. And then we're gonna take both of these and choose auto layout and make sure they are centered up. Now when you do that, sometimes it will, uh, based on where you center the text, which it wasn't centered, it may adjust. Oh no, 
Well, don't worry, I, I, I can find the center after we, we replicate this. So um, I'm gonna take the background and change this to white. Okay, so now what I'll do is create a component out of this and a component vary it by uh, double clicking. So just off the screen, I'm gonna hit uh, the frame tool, F. We're gonna make this white, or it's already white, okay? And we're gonna drag this, um, this component itself Oh, the frame, I made the frame a component by accident, dang it. Um, this is one of those annoying things about Figma that I, I find very frustrating. If we were to take, oh, okay, there's there's the actual, there are, okay, so there's the component. Um, I'm gonna delete this, there we go. And so now we have a, a component with a component variant, and so this bottom one, when somebody taps on it, we're going to change the background here um, to black, and then we'll change the text to white, just like that. So now we're gonna to switch to prototype. We'll go ahead and drag this over here, and this is on tap, it'll change to, we'll do a dissolve animation for 300 milliseconds, and then after, we'll take this one, we'll drag it up to the top, and we'll do a after delay. So it'll stay on the black you know, selected option for let's say three seconds, or in other words, 3000 milliseconds. All right, so now we'll go back to our assets. We'll drag this on back to our uh, frame here. And we'll also duplicate it, shift alt down. Now I'm gonna take both of them and just make sure they're, there we go, that's the center right there. We're going to double click this, change this to no. Now, of course, we want to make sure these are centered. So we'll take both of those with control shift and left clicking to select them and then center them. All right. So, oh, and then make sure we make any adjustments. Okay. So now these are centered up and I'm going to also just to create a nice distinction between them is just use the line tool and find the center right there. And there we go. So now when we hit, uh, we select this artboard and hit play. Should stay there for three seconds. And a no, stay there three seconds as well. All right, now I do want a way to go back. And here's a decision that I, I think is pretty smart that I've made. Um, let me actually go back to the original document. Um, I'm gonna take this icon right here and just paste it in. Now, why is this pretty low contrast? This kind of breaks the guidelines uh, in terms of just UI UX fundamentals. Well, the reason is, is because this is antici I'm anticipating this to be used for myself or somebody who's helping um, this person use the app. Um, a big thing about people who have a stroke or a brain in injury is you need to minimize distractions as much as possible. So they say, when you enter there, you know, all the rooms have TVs, turn off the TV, um, close the door because sounds, that, that's another form of distraction. Um, and so this right here, this icon, they're not meant to use it, I'm meant to use it. It's up here tucked away so that it's not a, 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 a distraction. All right, so um, next up, I. Uh, now that we have that, we'll we'll go ahead and connect it to another frame that we uh, create. So this is gonna be the main screen. And I'm gonna show you how I built this. So let me delete this, delete all that. So now we're working with an empty slate. And now what I wanna do, I'm gonna show you how I built all these, uh, these right here, because they're all interactive um, uh, component variants. All right, and it's one single component. Now it's right here. I'm gonna show you how I built this. I, because this is really useful. This is something I've, I've shown before. I'm gonna show it again though. All right, so going back here, um, let's see, let's sit up is gonna be the first one. And I'll do a couple of these. I'm not gonna do every single one. It, it would just take too long, but I'm gonna show you how I did it technically because it's pretty cool and it saves time. So what we'll do is I'm going to take our type here, sit up. All right, and I wanna make sure I'm using kind of the same sizing around here, so 43, and all right. And I'm gonna grab this actual icon, all right. All right, so it says sit up. 
And what we'll do is I'm gonna get another frame off to the side here because this is gonna be turned into a component, component variant. So we, before we create this actual uh, com uh, component, we do wanna have a background so that we can do that kind of inverted process right here, except for these. Now I wanna have four columns uh, as shown here, or actually three. Um, so three columns, you could have so many more things that a person could choose from. And I will have a second screen with like emotions, um, like so they can communicate how they're feeling. But I, you want it the few, the least amount of possible because screen real estate is important for somebody who, you know, may be very shaky with their hand movement. You want them to be able to select what they can select. So um, I'm just going to choose to do three, um, three, three columns and four rows. So to figure out you know, our, our widths that we need. It's not so important as long as we use auto layout and we can just put these three next to each other and just drag them out to the side. So we don't have to do any type of math like taking the width divided by three or anything like that. So as long as we come back here and I put in um, a rectangle in the back. Now let's situate to the back right there. And then I take that and make it white now I can take these two, um, let's see, uh, we're currently not in the same document, there we go. Now we can use auto layout, all right, and we'll center that up, and then we're gonna take this as well, we're gonna use auto layout as well, and we'll center that up too. So now when I push this and drag it around, it's gonna work exactly how we want it to. So now we could take it, create a component out of it, and a component variant. So now we take this, I'm gonna put this over here. Now at this point in time, I'm not really interested in this component variant right here. Um, we can't really use this because you're gonna see why in a second. In fact, I'll show you. So the goal here, um, let me go back to our assets and just drag on this right here, this first one. So the goal here, I'm gonna duplicate this uh, three times. And now, like I said, we can just drag this out, perfect. And so what we could do is um, like sit up. Um, I'm gonna change this one to lay down. All right, so now we need to lay down uh, one. We also, oh wait, sit up. Oh, I have sit up. This is supposed to be sit up. This is supposed to be, hmm. I have like this, two of the same words over here. I didn't realize I had that. This is technically sit up. This is lay down. This is, this should be something like incline. Uh, incline bed. Yeah, okay, so that's better. So incline bed, lay down and sit up. All right, incline bed. Now notice how this, this line height, you can go ahead and select both of these and let's take those down, there we go, okay. So incline, lay down, uh, sit up. So now we're using the three icons. So the way we do this, so that we can stick with just one component and uh, just two component variants, is to um, include each icon in the components themselves and simply toggle the hide and show. So the way we do this is, let me come over here because I already have the icons. I'm gonna take this icon right here, lay down, and I'm gonna paste it over here. Now, if you look at the layers, it itself is not a component, which is fine. Um, so what we could do is literally drag it right over here, drag it up, all right? And when we go ahead and toggle this off, we come back here, we can um, hide the sit up and then toggle the lay down and there you go. It is that freaking simple. I'll do it one more time. Um, so let's go back here, sit up icon. That's not my favorite icon. These aren't all from the same icon set, but they're close enough. Um, we'll do the same thing. So we're gonna put this here. I'm gonna drag this over here and we'll hide that. And then come over here, sit up will be, um, What was that called? There we go. And then there we go. Awesome. So now what we can do, uh, let's say, let's say assume, let, let's assume for a second that we have all these uh, 
right here, these icons ready to rock, um, and you know we have all of them accounted for. Then what we can do is we take this, we duplicate it, or I believe you could just select it and click plus, same thing. So now what we can do is we can change the fill um, to black, and then we could take selection colors, well not selection colors, I. Uh, what we now need to do is to double click into here and we take all of these and it depends, some icons may have fills and some may not. Um, I'll change the stroke to white here and just go through each one of these um, and just change these. Uh, yeah, so like that one, I wouldn't want to change the fill to white, we want to keep that black, there we go. So you have to use your discretion. Um, so if I bring that, just kind of toggle and, and show all these. I uh, So I'll take the stroke to white, sit up, will be white. All right, and then we'll co come back here and just hide, uh, we'll keep sit up there. All right, oops, we want that, there we go. And then what we do is we take our prototype. So this would be same thing as before on tap. We change to uh, 300 milliseconds. Take this one, this is after delay. Ooh, the uh, sun's coming in pretty bright over here. <laughs> uh, let's change this, um, yeah, eight, let's do three seconds, 3,000 milliseconds. And let's see if it works. So let's, oh, that doesn't work yet, one second. We'll make this go back here, and this will be um, oh, I thought that, uh, yeah, 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 this already had that, so this will go to right here. There we go. So now we can click this. Okay, so we click it. After three seconds, it's going to go away. And of course, you can click multiple at the same time. And there we go. So what it actually ends up looking like here is if I hit play, We'll see that we have incline bed, bath, um, yes or no, refers them to the yes or no section. You can go back. Now I'm gonna create another section for emotions where it has another screen of just emotion-based, you know, things like angry, sad, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so I'm actually pretty excited to see him interact with this. May not use it at all, <laughs> may hate it, uh, but we'll find out. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com and take my interactive UI UX course. Also, make sure to subscribe here, leave a comment, like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. All right, goodbye.